Good day. My name is Keith. Welcome to a special view from the 40. We need to talk about the CFL awards. I've got some thoughts. I want to share them with you. We need to talk about the CFL awards. Now, first and foremost, had the opportunity of watching it last night. Took place from Vancouver. And first, I want to give a shout out to Kate Burness and Milt Stiegel, who did a fantastic job hosting the, the awards. It was a tight show. It was about 90 minutes long. And it was a celebration of some of the best people in the league, uh, some of the fantastic men and women who make up this league and who work extremely hard, uh, whether it be on the field or the community um, events that they do uh, off of the field. But it was a great celebration of the CFL. So uh, at the helm of that, again, was Kate and Milt. You both did a fantastic job. You should be very proud of yourself. Um, I wish that TSN had covered it. It is what it is. Still had an opportunity to see it, and you both you both did did fantastic work as you as you always do. <clears throat> now, the reason that I'm making this video is is that while I'm watching the awards, there's one award that didn't sit well with me. I went to I went to sleep last night feeling that Bo Levi Mitchell had been robbed. Um, I woke up this morning thinking to myself that I think the the most outstanding player. I still think he should have won this morning, but I think. The most outstanding player seems to be more of a popularity contest than anything else. Now, the definition of the most outstanding player award, as I'm reading it here from our friend Wikipedia, is the most outstanding player award is annually awarded to the best player in the Canadian Football League. It is chosen by the Football Reporters of Canada. Well, I don't know who the Football Reporters of Canada are but I wouldn't necessarily be running out putting my hand up this morning because you got it wrong. Now, this is this is why. When I look at the stats of, of, of Bo Levi Mitchell, to me, I'm absolutely blown away with what he did this year on a team that, with all due respect, wasn't fantastic in the Hamilton Tiger Cats. So when we take a look at his stats here, he had 5,451 yards and passing now last night they put an interesting spin on it saying oh we set a new uh, new hamilton record how about he led the league and how about he led the league by the neck by the next person up by more than a thousand yards he also led in passing touchdowns 32 to the next person who was 24 now not to not to take anything away from brady Oliveira, he led the league in rushing absolutely but the next person's about what approximately 180 yards behind him. So it wasn't like he was blowing this person away to the clip that Bo Levi Mitchell was. Now, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity of going to the last Red Blacks game of the season, and it was Red Blacks against the Tiger Cats. And I said to a friend of mine, I said, you're going to see one of the top players in the league who plays for Hamilton. He leads the league in passing by like a 1,000 yards, but they're not making the playoffs. And my friend, not being a dum-dum, said, oh, so their defense isn't great. Well, he's not wrong. The, the the Hamilton defense isn't great. We went into that game, which, with all due respect, was a meaningless game, but it wasn't treated as such. Ottawa played their starters. Hamilton played their starters. Bo Levi Mitchell was phenomenal and gave his team every single opportunity to win it. But unfortunately, the defense of, of Hamilton couldn't keep up. That's the reality. This is a guy in Bo Levi who was relegated to a backup role in Calgary, a team that he led to the Grey Cup and won Grey Cups with, relegated to a backup role. He's like, uh-uh, went to Hamilton, started, and then absolutely led the league in passing. In a, in a, in a sport where everyone's looking at your age, he basically defied the odds and said, I am still the best. He is so good. Put this in perspective. The two starting quarterbacks at this weekend's Grey Cup, he's got more passing yards this season than both of them combined. Like it's not even close. Now I want to be abundantly clear here. This isn't a, this isn't a bash Brady session. I have nothing against Brady Oliveira. After seeing him last night, and if last night was the only time you had an opportunity to listen to this man speak, how could you not like him? He was one of the few people who actually got up on that stage and recognized his fellow nominees. He understands that it's not about him. He's part of a team. He completely embraces the fact that he's part of this Winnipeg Blue Bomber culture and what it means to him. I have nothing against him. I am simply saying that if you were to come into this blind and just have the stats of the two gentlemen in front of you, how does Bo Levi Mitchell not win this award? Because he's not part of the Grey Cup this weekend? And then I started looking at last year, and then the, the so-called geniuses that put together this award, 
got it wrong last year. So Chad Kelly won it last year, the quarterback for the for the Toronto Argonauts. He wasn't leading in any stats. You know who had a better season? The guy he was up against, Brady Oliveira. So I don't know if it was, oh, hey, we're going to give it to Brady this year to make up for the, the, the colossal mistake we made last year. I think they need to change the name of it. Call it the popularity contest, but don't call it the most outstanding player. With the utmost respect to Brady Oliveira and what he's accomplished this season and to any other player in the CFL, it is, it is crystal clear that the most outstanding player for 2024 came from a team that didn't even make the playoffs, came from a, came from a guy who was relegated to being a backup in Calgary and said, no, that's not good enough. A guy who was absolutely phenomenal this year, and that guy was Bo Levi Mitchell. Consider this. Coming into the playoffs this year, you know what Montreal, Ottawa, Winnipeg, Saskatchewan, and BC all have in common? None of them put up as many often uh, put up as many points as as Hamilton did. Think about that. The Hamilton Tiger Cats, from an offensive standpoint, had more points than five of the teams going into the playoffs. And I'm not trying to beat up on the Hamilton defense. But the Hamilton defense didn't do their job because if they did, we would have a different conversation about where that team was this year. Like I said, Bo Levi gave his team every single opportunity to win. He did his job. And if we're looking at the most outstanding player being the best player in the league, you can come back at me and say, oh, you're being mean to Brady. I don't think that I am. I think, I think again, he's an outstanding ambassador to this league. I'm simply saying when you're looking at most outstanding player for 2024, Show me the stats that prove above and beyond anything else he was the best player in the league because the stats are clear for Bo Levi Mitchell. I mean, other than that, it was a good award show. I like seeing Milt Stiegel is like my unofficial twin brother. And I mean, if Kate Burness ever said, hey, I want to watch a game with you, what am I going to do? Say no. I think they're both fantastic people. They just totally got the outstanding, the, the, the awards just totally got the outstanding player on. My name's Keith. That's my view from the 40.